Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing my review of The Clocks by Agatha Christie. So as always, I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs, read some of my highlights from it, and I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, The Clocks by Agatha Christie. The house at Wilbraham Crescent. To think that it was the house where it happened. It looked ever so nice. Net curtains and all. Yet a man had been killed there with a kitchen knife. An ordinary kitchen knife. Mesmerised by the people swirling round her, she stared and stared and ceased to think. She started when a voice spoke in her ear, then turned her head in surprised recognition. Approximately two minutes later, she was dead. So uh, as a cat owner, I enjoyed this. Um, she pushed open a door on the left. The atmosphere here was even more pungent. Come on, my pretties, come on. In the room, various brushes and combs with cat hairs in them lay about on chairs and tables. There were faded and soiled cushions, and there were at least six more cats. I live for my darlings, said Mrs. Hemming. They understand every word I say to them. Inspector Hardcaster walked in manfully. Unfortunately for him, he was one of those men who have cat allergy. As usually happens on these occasions, all the cats immediately made for him. One jumped on his knee, another rubbed affectionately against his trousers. Detective Inspector Hardcastle, who was a brave man, set his lips and endured. Here we have Mrs. Bland, uh, who is uh, the wife of Inspector Bland, I guess, and she says, um, I'm, fond of I'm fond of travel, but I wouldn't care to live out of England. We've got all our friends here, and my sister lives here, and everybody knows us. If we went abroad, we'd be strangers. And then we've got a very good doctor here. He really understands my health. I shouldn't care at all for a foreign doctor. I wouldn't have any confidence in him. So here we have, uh, they talk to the cat lady's neighbour, Mrs. Ramsey. Uh, the trouble is, she said, when people keep cats in that way, 14 she's got, they get absolutely besotted about them. And it's all a lot of nonsense. I like cats. We used to have a cat ourselves, a tabby. Very good mouser too. But all the fuss that woman makes, cooking special food, hardly ever letting the poor things out to have a life of their own. Of course the cats are always trying to escape. I would, if I was one of those cats. And the boys are very good, really. They wouldn't torment a cat in any way. What I say is cats can always take care of themselves very well. They're very sensible animals, cats. That is if they are treated sensibly. We get this reaction when uh, Mrs. McNaughton meets the inspector. Um, there was a faint scurrying noise upstairs and the words, Oh dear, oh dear, what's next? floated down. Then there was a patter of feet and presently Mrs. McNaughton entered the room with a worried expression on her face. There was, Hardcastle decided quite soon. Usually a worried expression on Mrs. McNaughton. Somebody says, of course, when there's no man in the house, boys do get out of hand. We get this little conversation here as well. I've got to go up to London tomorrow, make my report up to date. I can guess who too. You're not allowed to do that. Hardcastle grinned. Give the old boy my love. Also, I may be going to see a specialist, said Colin. A specialist? What for? What's wrong with you? Noth nothing, bar thick headedness. I don't mean that kind of a specialist. One in your line. Scotland Yard? No, a private detective. A friend of my dad's and a friend of mine. This fantastic business of yours will be just down his street. He'll love it. It will cheer him up. I have an idea he needs cheering up. What's his name? Hercule Poirot. I've heard of him. I thought he was dead. At some point, Mrs. Lawson looks around herself with the vague expression of the habitually untidy. It's the vague expression I have on my face. We get a little bit here about Ariadne Oliver, which I like because she's one of the characters I do enjoy. I, uh, I have read also, he said, some of the early works of Mrs. Ariadne Oliver. She is by way of being a friend of mine, and of yours, I think. I do not wholly approve of her works, mind you. The happenings in them are highly improbable. The long arm of coincidence is far too freely employed. And being young at the time, she was foolish enough to make her detective a Finn, and it is clear that she knows nothing about Finns or Finland, except possibly the works of Sibelius. Still, she has an original habit of mind. She makes an occasional shrewd deduction, and of later years she has learned a good deal about things which she did not know before. Police procedure, for instance. She is also now a little more reliable on the subject of firearms. What was even more needed, she has possibly acquired a solicitor or a barrister friend who has put her right on certain points of the law. It's very autobiographical to the point at which obviously Christie wrote Poirot, who is um, Belgian. And um, I think she's had some of the same problems that she wrote a Belgian, despite knowing very little about Belgians. Belgians, Belgians, Belgian, Belgium. Mm. And then we have this little conversation with Poirot. Um, the adventures of Sherlock Holmes, he murmured lovingly, and even uttered reverently the one word, Maitre. Sherlock Holmes, I asked. 
Ah, no, no, not Sherlock Holmes. It is the author, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, I salute. These tales of Sherlock Holmes are in reality far-fetched, full of fallacies and most artificially contrived. But the art of the writing, ah, that is entirely different. The pleasure of the language, the creation above all of that magnificent character, Dr. Watson. Ah, that was indeed a triumph. And it's interesting because he's talking to Hastings here, who is Poirot's Watson. I thought this was cute. This is the kind of thing that I would do. Uh, so, um, I felt a sharp pain in my shoulder. I'd been wrong. There was a neighbour here, all right. A very useful neighbour, if the neighbour had only been able to speak. I'd been leaning against the post of number 20, and the same large orange cat I had seen before was sitting on the gatepost. I stopped and exchanged a few words with him, first detaching his playful claw from my shoulder. If cats could speak, I offered him as a conversational opening. The orange cat opened his mouth, gave a loud melodious meow. I know you can, I said. I know you can speak just as well as I can, but you're not speaking my language. Were you sitting here that day? Did you see who went into that house or who came out of it? Do you know all about what happened? I wouldn't put it past you, puss. We get a reference to German. Um, I'm teaching her English and she wanted to know how to say it until we meet again. She had to tell me in German, Auf Wiedersehen. I know that because I once went to Switzerland and people said that there. And they said Gruß Gott too. That's rude if you say it in English. I don't know what that means in English. Somebody says, um, do they have women detectives? I quite like that. I don't mean police women. I think police women are silly. I enjoyed this because this is the two languages that I'm learning as well. Get me an apple, Ingrid, said Geraldine. Apple? Pom, apple. She did her linguistic best. I left them to it. And uh, we get a bit where Poirot throws his head back and recites dramatically. For want of a nail, the shoe was lost. For want of a shoe, the horse was lost. For want of a horse, the battle was lost. For want of a battle, the kingdom was lost. And all for the want of a horseshoe nail. Very nice, Poirot. So overall, the clocks by Agatha Christie, I did enjoy it. I mean, it's Poirot, so you've got to enjoy it. You know, um, I only have one more Agatha Christie book left to read now as well. So I kind of savoured it a bit more because of that as well. Overall, I'd probably give it a sort of 3.5, maybe a 3.75 out of 5. Uh, it was it was quite it was quite good. So uh, yeah, the clocks by Agatha Christie. So there we have it, that's what I made of The Clocks by Agatha Christie. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book, if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.